Personal terms are agreed between Manchester United and Mason Mount. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video we are centering it around the big breaking news that broke last night about Mason Mount and a potential move to Manchester United accelerating ever closer after it was revealed that the England midfielder has agreed personal terms with Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United. This deal seems to be moving at a rapid and fast rate. We, of course, have talked about Mason Mount in the past. We knew he was attracting the interest of the likes of Arsenal. We knew that Chelsea were looking to maybe try and keep him on uh, with obviously one year left on his contract and with obviously Maurizio Pochettino coming in. And we obviously knew that Liverpool seemed to be at one time or another in pole position to maybe sign him. Uh, but it seems that Manchester United have leapfrogged Liverpool in that pecking order and are seemingly closing in on signing Mount and him becoming their first signing of the summer. We're going to be talking all about this big breaking news story. We're going to talk about Mason Mount, Manchester United and everything else in between because there is a lot of layers to this story, I believe, to look at and identify. But I mean, before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both ones are always and probably greatly appreciated. And I also encourage you as well to get involved in the comment section as well. I'm sure you'll have lots of interesting thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it. On this particular news story and trans potential transfer story as well. That will make for great and interesting reading down below. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Like I say, last night, breaking news. Mason Mount had uh, ha had reportedly agreed personal terms with Manchester United. His move to Old Trafford seems to be getting ever closer. And he is a player that really, I've said before, divides opinion amongst fan bases and amongst fans, even his own fan base, I think he's a player that divides opinion. I think when he first burst onto the scene, a lot of people were optimistic and a lot of people were excited about the potential that he held. Obviously, he did well in the championship, being on loan at Derby under Frank Lampard for a year. And then obviously when Lampard made the leap from Derby and jump ship to Chelsea, he obviously brought him through more and more in the senior squad. And... It was exciting that a young prospect in that Chelsea Academy was finally getting their chance to shine on a senior stage. And he seemed to be getting better by the year. And then over the past couple of years, he just seems to have lost his way a little bit. Whether that's a confidence issue, whether that's just him um, overachieving in the first few years to obviously set the bar to a standard that he couldn't possibly reach going forward. I'm not 100% sure, but... Every manager that we've seen him play under, whether it is in at an international level in terms of the Gareth Southgate or at a club level, whether it's Frank Lampard, like I say, Thomas Tuchel, uh, um, Graham Potter, whoever it may be, has, has very much taken a shine to him. And a large part of that is down to, I believe, his professionalism, his work rate. Those are just two... Of the qualities that that um, Mount possesses in abundance, that I think has been talked about a fair amount, when obviously Mount has been called into question um, by managers that he's played under, and the managers have often pointed out about his professionalism, his work rate, what he brings to the squad, what he brings to the team on the pitch, everything along those lines. So that is, in my opinion, why. He is valued so highly by any other manager that he's played with, regardless of the level. Because whether it's managers that he's played with or managers that are, have taken a shine to him, he is liked a lot by managers of all levels. And you can tell that because of the interest level in him. It's not just the managers that he's played under, but Jurgen Klopp likes him. Clearly, if Liverpool are linked with him, Jurgen Klopp has taken a shine to him. Mikel Arteta, taken a shine to him. Arsenal were interested. Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea, Thomas uh, taking a shine to him. Lampard, taking a shine to him. Gareth Southgate, taking a shine to him. And obviously now, Eric Ten Hag, taking a shine to him by obviously wanting him to come to Manchester United. Hence why personal terms have been agreed and hence why Mount wants to go to Manchester United because otherwise, why would he agree personal terms? That is that is obviously the case. So, 
if he divides opinion amongst the fan base, my question is, why does a lot of uh, uh, a lot of top managers and a lot of managers of all different levels really like him? In my opinion, like I say, it's his professionalism, it's his work rate, and it's what he can bring to a team as well. Um, he has got big energy in that midfield. He can run and run and run for days. Like There's no doubt in my mind about that. He's got big energy. He's a proper box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, and I think in this Manchester United setup, I think alongside Casemiro, with an obviously aging Casemiro, with all things considered, like, I know it, I know he's only 31 and he's been excellent this season and he's been, uh, and he's probably been the first or second best CDM in the league behind Rodri, whichever way round you want to see it. I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer there. I think it's a very good debate to have as to who's better, Rodri or Casemiro. I think if you were to put him alongside Casemiro, uh, in that midfield, maybe take him, uh, take Christian Eriksen out and put him in in a different kind of role. Maybe he could, because let's face it, Mason Mount's been brought in as a number eight. Eriksen's been playing there as a bit of a makeshift number eight. Maybe in the se in next season, you could possibly switch out Bruno Fernandez for Eriksen. Maybe going forward, maybe that frees up him as a bit more of a creative outlet. Um, that could be a, uh, something that obviously um, Eric Ten Hag is looking to do. Obviously, adds more squad depth. I'm not saying Ericsson's going to be a starter over Fernandez by any means. No, I'm just saying that Ericsson then provides a bit more of a cover in that area rather than a bit more of a deep lying uh, playmaker further back. Um, and it can obviously add more depth to that squad. Add more quality to that squad in bringing in Mason Mount um, for that for that number eight role alongside Casemiro, who will be probably Casemiro's legs, and so Casemiro can focus more on getting into the right positions rather than go chasing the ball kind of thing. He will suit the high press and intense style that Eric Ten Hag wants to implement on his squad. Like I say, he's he's a pressing midfielder. He's just a midfielder that will run for that will run for days, and I think that he'll suit what Eric Ten Hag will try and transform into going forward. And like I say, in that midfield, he can do that. Casemiro can be the destroyer behind him so that if he does get beat, Casemiro can be in the right positions to put out the fires and put out the potential counter-attacks. And then, of course, you've got Bruno Fernandes there as a third midfielder who will be the main pre main creative playmaker. Not that Mason Mount can't playmake. He's got a little bit of that as well. He's a bit of jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of thing. But his energy and his work rate and his box-to-box -box -like, midfield, uh, like midfield kind of style is obviously what shines through more and shines through the most when you look at what Mason Mount offers the squad and what he offers the team. He does have a bit of playmaking ability about him. He does have a bit of a ball carrier style uh, midfield about him. He's got good passing. But again, he's not really a master of those. He's not really exceptional at any of those things. But his work rate and his desire is just obviously something that shines through most whenever you see him play. For Manchester United itself, he suits the homegrown English quota uh, in terms of in, in terms of teams, uh, in terms of uh, uh, putting through their squads and everything. So that obviously suits United down to the ground as well. Obviously a midfielder with a lot of Premier League experience. Um, and I think as well, this is just a player that's just lost his way. I think he's just lost his way these past couple of years. And I think, obviously, the whole Chelsea situation hasn't helped. Like, Chelsea's recruitment has been average, below average, to say the least. I don't think, that, I don't think that's helped him. I don't think it's helped him that he hasn't really had a, a main striker to play off um, for, for the past couple of years or so. I don't think it's helped that... He's had to play in a aging midfield or a, or a midfield that has been hit with injuries across the past couple of years, and I think there's been a lot of other issues as well, maybe personal behind the scenes that have gone off for Mason Mount. Because, like I say, when this guy first burst onto the scene, there was a lot of optimism about him. 
And there was a lot of excitement about what he could bring to the table. And then, of course, these past couple of years, it's sort of died down a little bit. It's sort of gone, maybe he's not as great as what, as, as what we thought. I think a change of scenery, a move away from Chelsea, and when you look at what Eric Ten Hag has managed to do with some of the players that were seemingly dead and buried just over a year ago, in terms of Aaron Wambasaka, for example, Marcus Rashford even, Luke Shaw, those three players in particular stand out to me, and there probably are more examples as well, of players that have grown and have been resurrected under um, under Eric Ten Hag. And maybe Mason Mount could be the same. Maybe Mason Mount could be a similar story here in terms of a resurrection arc. And maybe a change of scenery, like I say, a new manager with better ideas and a bit more stability in terms of that aspect. Because obviously this is going to be a, st a, a stabilised project that, you, that you're hoping, or Man United fans are at least hoping, um, United are going through right now. Ten Hag will be a permanent figure there. They're going to continue to build. They've already got a good starting block with how well they've done this season in getting Champions League football, getting a League Cup, and obviously an FA Cup possibly on the horizon. That would be even better for them as well. The building blocks are in place. Mason Mount could come in and he could take to it like a duck to water and he could get his confidence back and he could actually start shining again. And I know that a lot of United fans are a bit divided, but it could work. What I would say, this can't be the main marquee transfer. This can't be the main transfer of the summer. This has to be the start. If this is the start and then they go on and get a few more players of, of, of equal or better quality, then yes, that would be great for Manchester United and that would obviously sig signal um, a great window if they can fill in the key areas that they need to, sh to strengthen. But if this is it, if this is the main signing, the overall signing, the, the big signing, that's a bit underwhelming and a little bit disappointing in my opinion. And... I don't know how United fans will, will feel about that. And it's mainly just because there's so much up in the air right now that I'm even surprised that this transfer is even close to going through. Is thing, Are things happening behind the scenes in terms of the whole takeover deal? Is everything like agreed that we don't know about yet? Are the Glazers staying? Are they staying with one of the potential part-time or part, uh, part owners or whatever it may be? Because... You don't, in my opinion, you don't sign a player if you're planning on completely selling the club. That makes no sense to me. If you're going to have no say or nothing to do with the club, and you haven't agreed on a on a on a on a sale yet, why are you parting them with with a gift of a player, especially when you've been so stingy and so? awkward in terms of transfers and negotiations before to me it makes no sense is this obviously a signing that maybe some of the, maybe the new owners want there are a few questions that are unanswered about the whole takeover deal and it's kind of dragging its heels a little bit and i'm sure united fans just want it to be over and done with especially now that the transfer window is relatively here and obviously, think, uh, the wheels are being put in motion, shall we say, to obviously begin preparations for the next season. That needs to happen very quickly for Man United to know and understand how much they've got to spend this summer and where they can possibly go with that money in order to boost the squad, beef up the squad and obviously improve it for competing on multiple fronts next season. Maybe a title challenge. Maybe... Champions League, retaining the League Cup, going after the FA Cup again, that kind of thing. Is It does intrigue me, this whole United thing. And this deal does intrigue me as well, because does it say stuff about the owners? Does it, does it say that they're staying? Does it say that they're going? It, it intrigues me in that aspect, but one thing is for sure. Mason Mount has agreed personal terms. His move to Manchester United seems to be moving ever closer. And in my opinion, like I say, I think with what he brings to the table in terms of 
an industrious midfielder who can partner alongside Casemiro and be Casemiro's legs and shift the ball quickly forward in this counter-attacking high-press style. I think he suits the system pretty well. I think he'll work well with the other midfielders that are around him in terms of Fernandez and Casemiro especially. And I think a change of scenery will do the world of good. And I think that Eric Ten Hag can possibly rediscover Mason Mount's best form going forward. Um, and although, like I say, I'm a Liverpool fan and I don't like it that United are making moves and stuff like that. It is what it is. And we'll have to wait and see on the whole United takeover, whether this deal gets across the line and done dusted official and confirmed or not and whether or not Mason Mount is actually worth it in the end but those are just the thoughts comments opinions predictions feelings whatever you want to call it of this guy I want to know what you guys think what do you make of this whole Mason Mount uh, potential deal to Manchester United personal terms like I say were agreed last night the deal seems to be moving ever closer to becoming a reality what are your thoughts your comments opinions predictions feelings whatever you want to call it on this potential transfer story I'd love to read them uh, all down below in the comment section because I'm sure they'll all make for great and interesting reading. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way up. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things always and probably greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I'll see you all again soon in another video.